Hey, everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast focused on self-care, financial independence, and better communication for more positive relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson, and my guest today is Mari Collins Harris. Mari is a mother of three and passionate entrepreneur who has launched a child-led, parent-approved shopping app called Ket Shop. K-E-T-S-H-O-P. This app, y'all, it teaches kids to budget, save, and spend responsibly. Who doesn't love that idea? How awesome, how awesome is an innovative approach to financial literacy that we can all learn together. So stay tuned. You can't say Dr. Mo ain't tell ya. You can't say Dr. Mo fear magnifies the consequences of failure. What are you scared of? Why are you afraid? Welcome, Mari. Hi, Dr. Mo. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you. As, as a mother and a grandmother, there, there are so many ways I'm going to benefit <laughs> from this. I've been looking forward to this conversation. But let's start at the beginning. I know your mother, three innovative, creative, but how in the world did you come up with this amazing idea for an app? So um, back in the COVID days, I was kind of reeling and struggling to teach my kids, you know, personal responsibility. And Mm -hmm. the idea for Ket Shop um, was really born of a need I was feeling in my family, which was Mm -hmm. my kids always wanted new stuff. Like, Johnny has this toy. Jane has that toy. I just want everything. And when you're a parent buying those things, it's like, it feels good to get them the thing, but then they play with it or they break it and they lose interest. Mm -hmm. And they don't really understand the value of money that goes into that. Or like they just keep wanting more and more. And so I, um, my son really wanted an RC car and I was like, I don't love that idea. It's noisy. Mm -hmm. It's fast. We have a baby in the house. Um, so I gave him a bunch of chores he could do to earn money and he did. And then since it was COVID, we weren't going to any toy stores. So we went on to Amazon to look around and it was like, you search for an RC car and you get literally a hundred thousand options. And when you're a five-year-old, it's like, everything looks good. You can't, (laughs) you can't tell like, Whether it's a good value, whether it's like made Mm -hmm. in America, whether it is a knockoff or it's like got the wrong kind of batteries. There's a lot of decisions that need to be made. And I found myself just hovering over his shoulder, telling him, no, 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 no. And being that controlling made it really stressful for me and really stressful for him. So this Mm -hmm. moment that should have been like celebration and joy became a moment of like struggling for control. So I was like, I wish I could just give him a set of safe, good options and let him decide for himself. And so that was kind of the idea for Ketchup because there's no other shopping app out there that lets kids make those kinds of decisions by themselves and feel the repercussions of their choices. Right. right. So we built it. I love that. And and giving them that autonomy, building their confidence, starting early on. And and as you were talking about the things they can't do, I have a a seven-year-old granddaughter and I was thinking, can't read the reviews either because a lot of what, you know, my decisions, (laughs) because it's hard for me too, but it's looking at ratings and reviews. And at that age, either they can't read or they don't have the discernment to distinguish Mm -hmm. or pay attention to that. So I love- It's a skill to learn for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love the genesis of this app. And the name of it is very interesting. Ketchup, almost like ketchup. What what does Ket, K-E-T-S-H-O-P, and I'm I'm spelling it again for those who are <laughs> listening and not seeing closed captions. What does that mean or derive from, Mari? Um, so there was this study done by Heinz um a long time ago, and they found that children were using ketchup to like make food that was scary and new palatable. So if the parent wanted your ki- the kid to eat broccoli or right. like try beef Wellington or whatever it was, mm-hmm. they, they would use ketchup to like put a little ketchup on it. And then it's not so scary. And it has like a sweeter, more familiar taste. 
Mm-hmm. And so we are kind of doing the same thing for shopping where there is this big, scary world out there, but we're, we're kind of turning it into a more child friendly environment. So mm-hmm. obviously, you know, you're not going to use, um, a parent approved shopping app for the entirety of your child's life, mm-hmm. but we're just that bridge to get them to be smart shoppers where they can independently uh, make their own financial decisions. Okay. Okay. And in just, like that, just like ketchup. <laughs> and I love that. I, I actually use that and, and uh, cheese, I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> they're great <laughs> tools. I use a lot of cheese also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as you said that, it made me think I, I failed to ask what age group uh, is targeted uh, with the app. Yeah. So we support kids as young as four, usually more like five, um, wow. all the way up until about 12 or so. It kind of that, that school age area, area where mm-hmm. they're still dependent on mom and dad, but they're starting to learn to become their own little people, but not so old that they're, you know, going out with their friends independently. At that point, it's like they should have developed the skills to make their own decisions. Okay. And can, as, as a parent, can I see if I'm not with them, I'm get, allowing them to do this on their own. Do I have a companion app or how do, how do I see what they're doing? Yeah. So the way it works is there's two accounts. There's the parent account and the child account mm-hmm. on the parent account. You can send virtual money to your kid you approve purchases and you can veto anything that your child might Ah. be interested in. So if your kid finds something online that you don't want in your house, maybe like I just vetoed a thousand piece rubber band bracelet kit because I don't want a thousand rubber bands in my house. I'm like, uh, sorry. No, no, we're not doing that. So things like that, you can say like, no, Um, but it's for shopping online. And if you want to, like buy something from your local mom and pop shop. You can Mm -hmm. also create a little listing um, within the app and your child can work towards that and see their progress towards any goal they set, Um, which is a really great way for them to learn like the value of a dollar. Isn't just, I have a dollar. What can I buy for it? But Mm -hmm. rather I have a dollar, which puts me one dollar closer to this big goal that I have. Great, great. And that's a philosophy that will serve you for life or understanding that concept that will serve you for life. So they're kind of, if you will, because I put things in my cart all the time. And so they're kind of getting to that point of shopping it and putting it in a cart. And then mm-hmm. you, I, I love that you can, that you approve or veto, because I was thinking at first that they went all the way to the point of buying it. So when you veto something, should you then explain to the child why you vetoed it and, and help them understand why you don't want a thousand rubber bands in the house or whatever? <laughs> I think it's always a good idea to explain your reasons when you're talking to kids. Obviously, you know, it's it's different people parent differently. But sure. when I make those decisions, it's like, you know, my my kid got a he wanted to get like a paintball gun. I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh, first of all, like no weapons. Second of all, paintballs. Are you kidding me? No. Um, then, but having those conversations really helps so that the kid doesn't like try it again. And you keep mm-hmm. having the same like cyclical. No. Um, and you know, maybe things change, you know, maybe my kids will become organized someday and put all their toys away. And I think they can handle a thousand rubber bands. Um, but right now my children are four, six, and eight, and not a single one can like completely clean up their toys by themselves yet. Um, right. we're working on it, but, um, you know, I think having those conversations and letting them know when you clean up mm-hmm. your toys, then I think you'll be ready for a thousand tiny pieces to add to the chaos. So absolutely that there are rewards yeah. to your work in, in other areas as well. I, I was checking out your website, uh, which we'll have in the show notes, and you recently uh, published a blog called Unspoil Your Kids. I'm asking for parents and grandparents alike, how do you do that? 
I love that. Um, unspoiling your kids is, I think a lot of modern parents like myself, worry about that because there is so much we want to give to our kids beyond just our time, love and affection. It's like mm-hmm. they're advertised to all the time and they always want more stuff. Right. Um, and so it's, it feels good as a parent to be able to say, yeah, I'll buy you an ice cream. Yeah. I'll buy you this toy, but it's short lived. And it also helps create this culture of I ask for it. I get it. I, I start mm-hmm. to expect it. And the world doesn't work like that when they become adults. So what we're trying to do is set up an environment that more closely mirrors adulthood so that when they become an 18 year old, they understand, like, I can't just have everything I want just because right. I have the down payment on this car doesn't mean I can truly afford it. Um, mm-hmm. So by unspoiling them, um, we're asking kids and parents to start taking responsibility for the things that they want and working towards those items. So um, when the kid has to make a sacrifice in order to get the thing that they want, Mm -hmm. that is not spoiling a child. That is teaching them a lesson and teaching them that if you work hard, if you earn your money, if you take care of your stuff, you can get the things you want. And that's really the type of adult that we're trying to produce. Absolutely. Absolutely. All all very important lessons. And unfortunately, now we see so many people who haven't learned those lessons, don't understand credit score, don't understand budgeting and saving. So to introduce this early is just phenomenal. I I love it. What uh, and we're talking about teaching kids life skills, the important financial skills. What financial skills are most important to teach young children around saving, budgeting and just around finances. Yeah. So I think a lot of times the um, classic advice is the save, spend, give. So being able to save up in case of an emergency or in a child's case, maybe they're saving up for a trip or a bike or whatever it is that they truly want most. Um, Spending is learning to spend your money wisely. Like, figure out what item is the right thing to spend it on, like knowing that you're making that choice. And once you spend that money, you're not going to have those options anymore. And the third is giving. And in Catch Up, we also have a charitable giving option. So kids are able to uh, make donations to nonprofits that the family approves of. Um, It can be, you know, Doctors Without Borders or Mm -hmm. World Wildlife Fund, your church, your school, whatever it is. Or you can even make up your own. Like we had a family whose um, grandmother needed a ramp into her house. Mm -hmm. And so the child was like, I want to help grandma be able to leave the house more. And so he put down like $50 towards a ramp, which obviously isn't enough to buy a ramp. But it was like, that's That's so amazing. That's a lot of money and so generous. Um, So being able to teach the kids, like not only... Should you save money for the things you need? Money can buy you the things you want, but also money can change the world around you in ways that align with your values. I love that. And and it's good to reinforce. And I think they kind of come here like that is I've I've watched my kids and grandkids, you know, they're hugging, they're sharing here. You can have Mm -hmm. some of my sandwich and so forth. And then, you know, if, if we don't encourage it and don't model it, somehow that can get lost and turn into very self-absorbed, self-centered people. So that that's great that you built that in there to support that philanthropic inclination that I think most of them naturally have. Yeah, Uh, they are so generous. They really are really sweet. You talk about problem with uh, decision anxiety, your term that I I really like. Uh, What does that mean? And why are fewer options better? Oh, man. Okay. So there are a few different studies that have shown that um, decision anxiety is a real thing. Like the more options you have, the more um, unhappy you tend to be. So we think that we want all of these like different options. There was a, a very famous JAM study. Um, where they were letting, um, letting customers of a grocery store, uh, choose from like 
25 different jams, 24 different jams. And they could taste them all and then figure out which one they wanted to buy. And Mm -hmm. they ran one experiment with 24 and they ran one experiment with six. And they found that when you only had six options, you were A, more likely to buy a jam and B, happier with your choice. And the reason is because we have this sense that like there could be something better. If there's everything in the world open to us, we're always like, oh, by like closing one door or going through one door, we're closing all the others. Um, And so that that study has also been replicated for children where there's this like choice overload problem um, with kids. There's this um, wonderful researcher uh, out of Northwestern called uh, named Michael Mimeron. Mm -hmm. And she found that when children are given like seven books to choose from, I think they were like Curious George books, um, the kids would spend a lot of time choosing and they really enjoyed choosing the books. Mm -hmm. Um, But then they would spend less time actually engaging with them and reading um, as Mm -hmm. opposed to when they only had two options. And so I love this study because not only does it show like how much of our mental fortitude we have to put towards making those decisions but also like what's the end result in the end you have your toy or your book or your bike and are you going to be happy with that thing are you going to continue to play with it is it going to stand the test of time and if you have a million different options you might play with it and then be like well now i'm ready for something else and so um by limiting our kids choices we are helping them become, I don't want to say minimalistic, but we are helping them appreciate the things that they have and continue to engage with them over a longer period of time. And I I gotta say this applies to adults as well. I I do recall uh, one of those studies, I think it was on 60 Minutes or something that they featured it and it made a lot of sense to me, but Mari, Cheesecake Factory is a good example for me. (laughs) That menu is just ridiculous. It's like reading War and Peace. And sometimes, you know, I'm just like, I just go back to the appetizers because that's the first yeah. thing. And there are just a few of them. It's like, I don't want to think like this. This is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And that's me as an adult. So I can certainly see how it would impact kids to have too many choices. It, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, in grocery stores, too, I'd much rather go to a little small sprouts type of thing than huge big 50 hours of stuff so this yeah yeah very much very much with me what about let's talk about special occasions you know uh, adults we we, like you said we really want to make our kids happy we're trying to give them things we didn't have opportunities and adventures and can actually overdo it sometimes what are the best types of toys to give children when those occasions come up birthday christmas whatever Well, um, first of all, I think the best kind of toys you can give a child are toys Mm -hmm. that both the parent and the child approve of. Because if grandma gave my child that thousand rubber band set, I'd be like, oh, you can play with this one time and then I'm going to disappear it. So (laughs) having (laughs) having that like a family buy in, I think, is really important. And so on catch up, we do have a um, gift registry. So if your child's having a birthday or it's Christmas. Um, the parent and child can work together to build a, um, gift, a wish list that they can send to friends and family. And everything in that is presumably parent approved unless you're not paying attention. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think as far as toys that stand the test of time, obviously it's very, um, dependent on a child's age, but, um, we, I like to promote things that are kind of open ended, like, Legos, mm-hmm. blocks, um, pretend play, arts and crafts stuff. Those are the things that games, things that you can like do over and over and over again. Whereas there's a okay. lot of toys out there where it's kind of like a one and done kind of toy. Mm-hmm. Like arts and crafts, some of those kits are one and done, but it's right. also like your child's learning valuable, like manipulation skills, coloring skills, whatever it is. Right. But, right. Yeah, I like to promote things that don't have a specific thing that you must do with it. Like, if you have a ball, you can do anything with it. But if you have a football, it's like, well, you can only play football with it, you know? So Mm -hmm. that's maybe not the best example, but 
the idea of getting toys where it can be repurposed for a number of different uses is um, the best way to get things that last. I like that. And and I'll keep that in mind because I struggle with that. And I I was guilty of just getting gifts and thinking about the kids and not thinking about my son and his wife. So now I'll send them a screenshot or whatever, because I was just like, oh, they're going to love this. They're going to love this. And not thinking about when I was a parent with young kids and, you know, you got something that they're just banging on 24 Mm seven and that siren because the battery and a lot of batteries. A lot of batteries got removed. Oh house. man, oh, yeah. yeah. We have we have like two batteries in our house that are for kids. And if you want one toy, you have to take it the batteries out and then wow. move them to a different toy. Because I'm just like, you can either make noise or flashing lights, not both. <laughs> not both. I love that. I wish I'd known that. <laughs> uh, parents, grandparents, there you go. That's how you saw. Just limit that the problem. batteries. That's all it takes. Limit the battery. I love that. I love that you're you're teaching me so much because you never <laughs> stop learning as a parent or a grandparent you you really don't and and things are evolving and changing so the things i did or bought are they're obsolete now so uh and that's why i keep bringing grandparent into here because I, I really want to download this app and i'm wondering this is my problem i have back to the gift giving does it uh do the settings, do you put in there their age or something or, or how does that yeah, work? Yeah, you can enter their age, um, but it basically works like kind of like a registry where the child can search, the parent can mm-hmm. search, they can find whatever their interests are, but we do have like boundaries. Um, so we're always working to flag items that are inappropriate. Mm-hmm. We have filters up so that your ca- your kid can't look up like, shotguns or tequila or right. sex toys just to make sure that it's like a family friendly environment and every day we're you know more stuff shows up and every day we take more stuff out just to make sure that you know we're we're making an environment where 5 to 12 year olds um can find appropriate items without you know being in the wild wide world of amazon uh, and I and I love hearing that you're monitoring and it's evolving and you're constantly putting things in in place uh, to keep it safe as as well. We we touched on this a little bit about teaching children to be generous toward others, and I, I really think that generosity with your time and resources is very very important, and it keeps us from you know being in our own head thinking everything is so horrible that that's one of the ways I, I actually relieve stress uh is to you know help other people it really helps me but for kids how do you instill you know yes they come here very loving and then they kind of get out of it but how do you teach them to be generous toward others and why is that important Mari because so many people don't give they don't do anything for anybody and they seem like they're okay I mean you can be okay. You can live mm-hmm. a selfish life and be okay. Um, not that, you know, charitable giving is the only way to share sure. yourself. I mean, sure. you know, you can volunteer, you can help your neighbors, you can be a good citizen. There's a lot of different mm-hmm. ways to give. And it doesn't have to be like, I give $50 to, you right. know, whoever right. every month. Um but I think making making it obvious to your children when you are doing those things helps them see that that is a normal way of living. Like volunteer at your kid's school and make sure they know you're there. Say hi to them. Tell them like, oh, I'm not here as your mom today. I'm here as, you know, a helper at the school or, you know, join uh, the board of a nonprofit. There's a lot of different ways that we as adults can model the behavior we want to see in our kids. And mm-hmm. as they get older, you know, let them come with us. Go do like a trash pickup. For younger kids, it's like money doesn't make sense the way it does as those children get older. And so mm-hmm. for younger kids, it's very easy to give away money because especially when it's virtual, because they don't have the concept of like the actual value of $10. So being able to use your time and, you know, maybe you're bringing juice boxes to underprivileged kids, whatever it is, like you see yourself giving your time and your effort 
and your resources to other to others and that helps your kids understand like that's how life should be and get that good feeling too because it does feel good to help other people it, it really really does which is why i said time and resource because really for some of us our time is just as valuable as if we gave those resources and, and i did that i was in the junior league my sorority church and i would take the boys along and help you know whether we were at food bank or or the giving tree or whatever. And now my sons are in their thirties with their own families. And it just does my heart so good to see them, whether they're helping a friend move or somebody sick and they're going to, uh, you know, visit them or take them Mm -hmm. something to eat. And, uh, you know, I have to see it on social media. They might not tell me, but (laughs) (laughs) and I won't even say necessarily social media, but my my boys have a podcast and they'll talk about these things. And, uh, um, My heart just is like, okay, okay. That's, yeah, that's it's a proud what mama wanted. moment for sure. That's what I wanted. It really is. Um, so how long has Catch Shop been available? Uh, well, the idea came in 2020 and it, we're a family run business. It's my husband and I doing almost everything. So we got it off the ground 2021, 2022. Two, somewhere in that range. So mm-hmm. we um, we are constantly updating it and adding new features and you know fixing bugs. Um, but it's been it's been like going pretty well for since the last year, I'd say. But we've we've had it to a point where we aren't finding new things that are like must haves, like adding donations or wish lists right. or all that kind of stuff. I, we have a full product now. That's sweet. Congratulations. What what has the feedback been from users? You know, it it really depends. Like we get basically two feedbacks, which is I love it. I wish I'd always had this. Like I, I wish I'd had it as a kid. And then the other one is a little confused because there's nothing else like it out there. Mm-hmm. And so it takes some um understanding of the goals and the um the way we're trying to teach kids to shop because mm-hmm. some parents come in thinking like oh it's a toy store online so i'm going to buy things for my kid like what's going on with all this other stuff why why do i have to create a kids account it's like well you can buy stuff as an adult but we really want your child to make those decisions we right. want to empower kids to start yeah. learning these skills so um yeah, it has been a little bit of a struggle to educate people about our goals as a company and uh, what we're trying to do. Because, like I said, no one else is doing it. So we're blazing new frontiers. Absolutely. And when you blaze new frontiers, you know, there's, there's some rough spots. <laughs> a lot of things you got to <laughs> cut down, chop down, get out of the way out there in the wilderness. Yeah. But then we can follow behind you on that new trail and uh, teach our kids and grandkids. Some wonderful, wonderful new skills. So many people get in, in into trouble with credit, you know, and uh, later in life because they have not, they don't have financial literacy. They haven't learned these skills. This is so, so important. And I, I'm really, we're going to be a uh, big time promoting this app <laughs> and you because I love it so very Aww. much. And the fact that it's, you know, woman down, I know you work with your, with your uh, spouse, but you know, it's an independent business and yeah, this is just great on so oh, many thank levels. You. What do your kiddos think about it? We're going to talk about the, how to connect with you and so forth, but what do your kiddos think about this? Do they understand the magnitude of what you and dad have, have mm. done there? I, I don't think so because it's so normal to them. I think they think everyone's parents are working <laughs> on their own projects. Um, right. But they they love the app and it's it's been really useful to like see what my kids choose to buy because lately we've been um, if someone loses a water bottle or mittens or a backpack or something instead of me buying it it's up to them to buy it mm. and use their own money to replace those items so we've seen them be a lot more careful with like taking care okay. of their stuff <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, yeah. But yeah, seeing what they choose, I was like, oh, you know, of course my daughter's going to want, you know, a pink backpack and my son will want like camo or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. but that's not at all what they end up choosing. And so 
I realized that I'd been making a lot of assumptions and like filling their lives with things that were based on my impressions of them rather than mm-hmm. letting them make the choices. So yeah, my son has a uh, purple striped mittens and my daughter's got a tie dye backpack and you know, it's, it's really cool seeing them kind of right. surround themselves with things that express their individuality. That, that's a great point too, because uh, I kind of go in and just like, What is the top gift for girls four to seven? But they have their individual preferences and and you're absolutely right. Good, good lesson learned. (laughs) So tell us uh, how to connect with you online and how to get the app, Google Play, you know. Yeah. How do we get on board? Uh, We, we are available on Google Play and um, the Apple Store. You can also um, check us out at ketshop.com, K-E-T-S-H-O-P.com. From there, you can also download the app um, or on social media as well. Um, Instagram is probably the best one. It's mm-hmm. uh, app, And you can come check us out, uh, do a little tour, poke around the app. We're always uh, looking for feedback. So if anyone has any brilliant ideas or like major bugs that they encounter, please holler at me. All right. Holler at Mari. Thank you so much for your time and this great information on how to help our children become smart consumers and philanthropists. Like I said, I'll be recommending it to my friends and uh, listeners. I hope you'll check it out. Visit the website and download Catch Shop for you and your offspring. Any parting words before we go, Mari? Well, just want to say thank you so much for having me on. This was such a pleasure. And um, you really do your homework. You had some very insightful questions. Well, thank you for saying that. I, I do. We do, a, we do a lot of diligence. Your, your time is valuable and you've got some interesting things to share. So I, I want to do everything I can to spotlight you and uh, give you an opportunity to share great information like you've done today. So thank you. And thank you listeners for your time and support of my indie business, Perpetual Motion with Dr. Mo Anderson. Remember to like, subscribe, and share for more like this weekly episodes. And please visit my website at drmoanderson.com to book me as a speaker and learn more about my books and services. Until next time, be well and be safe. And wasn't that a great program? Oh, love that episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Learn more about me on my website, drmoanderson.com. That's M-O-E. You can read book excerpts, watch videos, learn about my services that I offer, and book me for a speaking engagement. I'd love to talk with your group, and I'd love to work with you. So until the next time, review, renew, and re-you. Thank you.